very warm welcome to VTU e Shikshana program. I am Dr. Daksha N. R. Patil, uh, who is currently Associate Professor at BMS College of Architecture, Bull Temple Road, Bangalore. And the course that I would be dealing with is for the 6th semester BARC for the session April to August 2021. And the course is Building Services Part 3. Uh, dealing with air conditioning, mechanical transportation, and fire protection. The code goes as 18ARC63. So let's begin the course. I will be dealing with modules 1 and 2. And these lecture sessions will go in parts as we proceed across the syllabus. So to get an overview of the modules that are contained in this particular course, we have totally five modules of which module 1 and 2 deal with mechanical ventilation and air conditioning systems. So I would be uh, discoursing these two subjects and the other three would be dealt by other faculties. So getting a glimpse of the syllabus as uh, prescribed by VTU, the objective of the course, of the overall course, is to develop the knowledge and skills required for understanding the mechanical services in buildings and their integration with architectural design. So to recollect, you have already studied building services under various headings like water supply, sanitation, uh, electrical services. So these were the mandatory services that a building must have to have. So in this particular course, you will be dealing with the add-on mechanical services such as ventilation, vertical transportation and the most essential mandatory aspect of fire protection. So module one, uh, will deal with mechanical ventilation and air conditioning. It begins with an introduction to the course uh, by understanding what is the meaning of mechanical ventilation, what are the various types available and second part of the module will give a basic understanding to the uh, various aspects of dealing air conditioning in a building. For example, psychrometric processes, uh, load calculation, zoning, etc. in a building. The module 2 per se will directly address the various air conditioning systems that are at our disposal to use for various kinds of buildings. So these are the main uh, aspects that we will look at in the modules 1 and 2 dealing with mechanical ventilation and air conditioning systems per se. And there are a list of references that are prescribed in the syllabus. So these are some of them and essentially to be uh, referred by all of us to get a good theoretical hold on this component of services. And the most important aspect in this references is a serial number 7 and 8 if you can see the national building code of india 2016 which is available on the net and also on the website so th these are a very essential aspect of knowing as architects and professionals in the building industry so let us make a, a note of this and try to visit the NBC codes and norms as we proceed ahead. So beginning with module 1 and serial number 1 under the module that is mechanical ventilation and air conditioning and introduction. And this presentation would essentially cover uh, the basics of mechanical ventilation understanding the need for the same in a building, guidelines as per NBC or ISHRE, types of various mechanical ventilation systems that are 
available for us to incorporate in our designs ahead in the profession. So firstly being architects is it is essential to make ourselves aware of the scope of work that we are vested with. So as an architect what should I be doing, what am I responsible for, what is my role in a building that has to be understood because once you enter the profession this is a very essential part for any young architect to understand and uh, inculcate the various intricacies or etiquettes of the job. So essentially as an architect I think we all have passed through various uh, levels of architectural design studios right so we have dealt with uh, projects of various scale various uh, typologies various um, sizes be it residential institutional industrial etc so what we begin normally as a process in design we understand the site and the project at hand and we come out with concepts schemes for design by way of relying on research uh, say by case studies or literature studies or theoretical background then we plunge into the actual design right so a nice wonderful scheme of architectural design is uh, created by the architect for the said project and then you have the various uh, professional customer relationships with the client, with the contractors, with various service providers, etc. So once this entire scheme of design is formulated, finalized, we move on to the next stage that is a working drawing creation. So these are uh, good for construction drawings that the architect would be releasing to the site at various stages of the project beginning with setting out foundation floor plans elevations services in correlation with the structural drawings and the um, construction drawings further to that we have uh, estimation to understand what is the quantity of materials uh, etc we draw contracts in large scale projects with various uh, contractors, service providers and then the actual construction stage is initiated. So you need to have all these ready in the beginning and then it is good for construction. So to enable all this there is a good amount of project coordination that is uh, expected to be dealt with with all these players or stakeholders or consultants and the most important essential thing for a building to be successful is the building services and the technology knowledge so building is fine to go if it is aesthetically well designed if it is functional if the circulation is taken care of if it is uh, if it is decided on what materials to go in for all that fine but for a building to function efficiently uh, to the required uh, expectations you need to have a good plan of building services in place and adapting the right technology that is available in the market for us to make the building a successful one so that becomes a very essential or primary component in making a building function and function well. So building services, there are various levels of building services. Some are most essential, fundamental or what you call as mandatory. Some are add-ons some are services that will um, make the building function better for its occupants so building services are systems installed in buildings
to make them comfortable, functional, efficient and safe. So understanding these four adjectives is very important for us to make a building a better place to live, to use, to function, right? So building services are like the lifelines of a building. They are the ones by which the system is going to function better. So these building services can be controlled by simple mechanisms such as the manual switches, clocks, detectors such as thermostats or uh, even the motion detectors or they can also be controlled by a more complex system called as building management systems. So services begin with the most elementary such as water supply and you have these various interfaces between the user and the services. Uh, a tap, a switch if you want to switch on the light, if you want to control intensity of something there are thermostats, if it is a sustainable building it is most essentially based on motion detectors that is it switches on the service only when it realizes there is movement or motion by a human. So there is a spectrum of complexity of building services that can be introduced in a building. So building management systems refers to adapting any of these levels of mechanisms and collation of various services into a single control system. So very systematically the technology is advanced and knowing these is a very essential um, knowledge base for a young architect. So building management systems are mostly computer based systems and they are used to monitor and control a range of building services. So you can list the uh, various building services in a building for example as these the lighting, heating, ventilation and air conditioning which is most popularly or colloquially called as HVAC, fire protection, fire detection by way of smoke, de smoke detection and alarms, motion detectors, uh, the surveillance cameras, the CCTVs, security and access control, ICT systems, lifts, the various processes or equipment required for, a, for the function to run in the building, uh, shading devices, of course from the thermal and from the thermal uh, sun uh, sources, smart meters to read and uh, register the amount of energy that is consumed. So the list is quite extensive. What a building management system as a one-stop system or management system is controls and monitors all these services with a easy interface between the user and the systems. So energy management system relating to the overall operation of the building is managed by BMS. There are additional capabilities that are assigned to such a system. Uh, the building management system will monitor the equipment. For instance, it is going to uh, register when the equipment is due for maintenance. Uh, when is it likely to undergo a change of uh, its components like the refrigerants or uh, fluid or water? How to protect the equipment against various mishaps like power fluctuation, um, voltage, uh, incoming voltage being high, security for the uh, inhabitants or occupants of the buildings, etc. So apart from 
the general functioning of the services the building management services systems will also look at aspects of security safety and uh, maintenance aspect of the equipment and the processes it will help us to understand how buildings are operating and will adjust the systems to optimize the performance now there is always a, a very novel intent when we design that the building has to be sustainable the building has to be green in its integral uh, capacity it has to optimize or uh, utilize least resources to achieve the highest efficiency so building management system will come to the rescue because it is going to uh, also calibrate uh, and monitor the usage of energy and the output performance it will also enable uh, giving out alarms when a certain system exceeds the expected range of uh, functioning when the parameters of say voltage or uh, velocity or speed of the air exceeds the temperature exceeds uh, a certain limit it is going to sense that there is a cause of concern and raise the alarm for the occupants to address the issue or to vacate the premises in the given time so that is one of the very essential uh, uh, advantages of building management systems it may also be a direct digital control ddc system so there are various service providers or um, consultants who offer a very holistic building management systems but as architects we need to know what is the current uh, technological advancement in the field and how things are tied up to be controlled as intelligently as possible. So, the term intelligent uh, is used under made various platforms these days. That is uh, indicating that the system is smart enough to respond to situations. So, it is calibrated to sense and respond so building management systems may be integrated with a little advanced system called as BIM building information models to allow performance in use to be compared with the design criteria and design simulations so BIM modeling is uh, comes in handy when you want to visualize how a building is going to be formulated uh, simulate and understand it with the 3d three dimension and also simulate the way the services are going to be uh, put into action into this building so BIM modeling is also one of the um, aspects that we can acquaint ourselves with to equip ourselves to be better technologically oriented and knowledgeable now since we are going to handle uh, mechanical ventilation let us just get an overview of what is a basic ventilation after all we have understood this in in our uh, precursor semesters a quick recap of what ventilation means so that we can add the uh, objective of mechanical ventilation to the same so what is ventilation it is the process of changing air in an enclosed space so you have buildings you have uh, various indoor spaces when we say the building has to be ventilated well it refers to the process of changing the air in the given enclosed space a portion of the air in the space should be continuously withdrawn and replaced by fresh air drawn from the outside to maintain the required level of air purity 
for reasons of having good health, good comfort and safety of the building occupants. So that's very beautifully put. We need to keep removing the used air or the vitiated air which is laden with carbon dioxide and other uh, such uh, impure uh, components in the air. Push it out and get in the fresh air filled with oxygen for the sake of the occupants. So that is the basic or fundamental uh, meaning of ventilation. So elaborating on the uh, expected parameters of natural ventilation, a means of changing the air in an enclosed space in order to First point is provide fresh air for respiration approximately 0.1 to 0.2 liters per second per person. So these are uh, basic thumb rules or uh, parameters for ensuring we are having a good uh, uh, ventilation design for our buildings. So first point is fresh air. Uh, and goes with the parameter. Secondly, preserve the correct level of oxygen in the air which is approximately 21%. So 21% of the air has to be laden with oxygen. Control the carbon dioxide content to no more than 0.1%. So this is a very uh, critical aspect of a well ventilated indoor space. Concentrations about 2% are unacceptable as carbon dioxide is poisonous to humans and can be fatal. So this has to be kept in mind and to uh, sense this there are various detecting systems, very simple ones that can be installed in any home or indoor uh, spaces to keep checking and monitoring the purity of air that we are breathing in indoors. Control the moisture with relative humidity about 30 to 70 percent which is acceptable and also subjective to the place you are in. For a city which is inland as against what is on the coastal area, the expectations of RH or humidity levels are varying. However, between 30 to 70 is considered acceptable subjected to the space or the place. Remove the excess heat from machinery, people, lighting. So when you uh, imagine an indoor space. We should also know that the sources of heat in the space are mainly the people who are uh, perspiring and breathing out carbon dioxide. There are various uh, lighting systems in the space, the bulbs the, uh, of various uh, as categories. Then there are various equipment or machinery that is running. All these will contribute to the heat generation in a space and if we were to keep it well ventilated and safer, we need to remove that excess heat and cool it and introduce fresh air. Dispose of odors, smoke, dust and other atmospheric contaminants. Air is laden with lots of um, impurities which has to be filtered out or which has to be constantly pushed out of the system to enable again a better breathing uh, indoor spaces. Relieve the stagnation of air. When air is stagnated it gets uh, claustrophobic or the dispersed impurities, carbon dioxide remain to contain itself there when there is stagnation. So you have to see that you design 
to avoid stagnation and provide a sense of freshness with the inner air movement of 0.15 to 0.5 meters per second which is considered as adequate. Again, these parameters are the basic standards or ranges and they are subjective to the space in question depending on what function the space is hosting. Stack effect, I am sure this rings a bell in all of us. It is the principle by which a good natural ventilation is enabled in a space. Right? So, the vertical airflow within the buildings caused by the temperature created density differences between the building interior and exterior or between two interior spaces. So, if you can see the cursor, we have the fresh inlet via window, a uh, good fenestration design in your building. So, it circulates within the space, high pressure zone. So, as it enters, it stacks to sort of layer itself. That's why the word stack. As per its pressure and density. So, we breathe in this fresh air, breathe out carbon dioxide and also perspire, adding to the moisture content of the air which makes it uh, denser right so now from high pressure to the low pressure there is always movement in this fashion only so the air starts to stack and is taken out from the opposite side of the uh, inlet and most probably on the ventilator level so designing fenestrations and ventilators uh, in a very logical manner is also one of the uh, prerogatives while doing design. So stack effect is the one which enables uh, ventilation in an enclosed space.